from elegant lakeside boathouses to modern convention centers, from breathtaking views and spirited monuments to the historic citrus industry and the striking downtown skyline at sunset. And more! This is Riverside, California. Stewart's Boathouse sits at the edge of a lake in Fairmount Park. Fairmount Park is the largest in the city. Stewart's Boathouse is an example of the mission revival style of the 1920s. The current boathouse was dedicated in 1995. The boathouse has two levels. The lower level houses pedal boats available for rental. And the upper level is the lakeside room, an 1800 square foot event space. When I visited the park early in the morning, there was plenty of space for me to have to myself, which I appreciated. So, last year, when I was doing my research after visiting Riverside on New Year's Eve, I discovered that there was much more that I wanted to see and do. And in this video, I did most of those things. Mount Rubidoux is a designated city landmark. It stands 1,337 feet high and is made of granite. Mount Rubidoux is west of downtown Riverside. The mountain was named for a wealthy ranchero, Louis Rubidoux, who owned the mountain at one point. It took me about 30 minutes to walk to the top of the mountain, including shooting video along the way. And it took me about 30 minutes to walk down. It hosts the oldest non-denominational outdoor Easter sunrise service in the United States. Conservationist John Muir is one of the famous visitors to Mount Rubidoux. Peace Tower and the Friendship Bridge were dedicated to Frank Miller in 1925.
The cross at the top of the mountain is dedicated to Father Sarah. The Mount Rubidoux Trail was opened in 1907, and the cross was installed in the same year. The city also launches fireworks for its American Independence Day celebration from the top of the mountain. And since we can, I think it is appropriate to have a few moments of silence for everything that is going on in the world. The Riverside Main Library was my next stop. It has a covered public plaza ideal for city events. This is the third main library of the city of Riverside, which opened in 2021. Previously, there was the Mid-Century Modern Library, which opened in 1965, and the Carnegie Library from 1903. One thing I liked about how quiet the library was is it really makes editing the sound easy. The downtown bookstore in Riverside has been open since 1979. Books have given me a magic portal to connect with people of the past and the present. I know I shall never feel lonely or powerless again. So because of books, I'm here today, happy, living again with a purpose and a clarity most of the time. So may books be always with you. Thank you. I visited the underappreciated University of California Riverside, or UCR, for the first time. The bell tower was dedicated in 1966. It stands 162 feet high and has 48 carillon bells. The bells were made by the French Packard Bell Foundry. The university has ranked in the top 15 public universities in America and first for social mobility. It also has ranked second in financial aid. 
The story of the university starts in 1907 with the Riverside Citrus Experiment Station. Construction on the university began in 1952. I never visit a university without visiting its hub. The Highlander Union Building is the hub of campus life. Formerly, there was the Commons. This facility opened circa 2009. The Highlanders became the mascot in 1955. The Thomas Rivera Library was one of the original five buildings on campus. It has operated since the first day of classes. However, the library did not reach its current form until 2001 after expansions and upgrades. Thomas Rivera was a former chancellor of UCR. The first day of classes were held in 1954 and the university was officially dedicated. Then I had to check out the barn. The barn was built in 1917 as a working barn and horse stable from the days of the Citrus Experiment Station. The barn was incorporated into the university in 1955 as a dining and music performance venue. Then they renovated in 2018, resulting in the current version of the barn. The gardens were closed, but that did not keep me out altogether. The UCR Botanic Gardens were officially founded in 1963, although the idea for a botanic garden goes back to 1954. The botanic gardens have changed throughout the years, and they will continue to change into the future. Personally, they weren't my favorite. My next stop was the California Citrus State Historic Park. California Citrus State Historic Park covers 250 acres. Oranges conjured images of romance, prosperity, and abundance. The orange groves once spread across Riverside, San Bernardino, Orange, Los Angeles, and Ventura counties. The park opened in 1993. Naval and Valencia oranges, grapefruits, and lemons are all grown here.
craftsman California bungalow style architecture was used throughout the park to evoke a romantic past. I have been wanting to come to this place for a few years now. The Visitor Center Museum is a replica of a citrus packing house. 5,000 years ago, citrus was cultivated in Asia. In marketing their products, growers liked to evoke the Asian origins of their fruit. Citrus traveled along the 7,000 mile Silk Road to get from Asia to the Middle East and the Mediterranean. Explorers like Columbus brought the citrus across the Atlantic to the Americas. Citrus was considered the second gold rush, but it also helped feed the miners of the first gold rush of California. The railroads also played a valuable role for the citrus industry. Eventually, the discovery of vitamin C led to the promotion of citrus as a health and wellness product. There was also an exhibit displaying the role women and minorities played in citrus. And to this day, the industry is still essentially segregated with Latino men and women doing most of the work. I bought some postcards from the gift shop which I featured at the beginning. This is a replica of an old-fashioned roadside fruit stand. I could not resist buying a five-pound bag of oranges. The Citrus State Historic Park surpassed my expectations, and I recommend it. Next was the Riverside Convention Center. I just feel that this place is very science fiction and chill. Of course, I had to walk through downtown in search of all the fall decorations and all the windows and the shops, and I ended it with getting some donuts from the donut bar. The highlight of this trip was arguably the drone flight I did from this parking lot. <laughs> 